Sometimes I believe that even as a child of God, you go through more. But as a child of God, you can take refuge and you can take solace. You can find peace in the scripture said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Amen. I think that when we go through problems and we go through struggles, sometimes it's a means of our way in which God uses these problems and these situations to show up and show off. He shows up and he gets you out of one trouble and you can basically begin to write a book or write references of the many times he has delivered you. And so when the next trouble comes, you can reflect back on the last couple that he got you out of. Then you can move forward and say, the same God that did it then and at that time and in that circumstances, this is no different. And he's still with me. So we take our confidence and we rest in him knowing that he will help us. He will get us out of trouble. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that the people who do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. We began last week our lesson by looking at one such man, one such king, Jehoshaphat, what he was experiencing. And all through this week, I mean, the Lord had me all over the Word of God. He had me in Genesis. Then He had me in the Book of Romans. Then He had me back in Second Chronicles. Then He He just had me all over the Word of God, and I, I enjoyed it. But then, then comes Sunday morning. I'm saying, our, our couple of days before the Lord, our, from Wednesday, I'm asking, what am I going to minister? Lord? What do you want to minister? You hear nothing. And then on the Sunday morning or Saturday night. You ask again and you hear nothing. And then on the Sunday morning you ask and you hear nothing. So I've learned by principles that when you hear nothing, you go back to where you last heard it from and you stay there. You don't move forward. So we're going to look at the lessons a little bit of the same chapter that we looked at last week and see what transpired. So if you have your Bible, will you turn with me to the second book of Chronicles? Second Chronicles chapter 20. <laughs> And I think God wants to burn in the recess of our mind and wants to burn in our heart His power and His assurance. He wants to assure us that we're not to worry. He is with us. So if you have your Bible, will you turn it into the second book of Chronicles? We're going to be reading from verse 14. To verse 17. You have it, you just rest up on your feet, you stand and read it. Second Chronicles chapter 20, reading from verse 14 to verse 17. Just stand up. We read it together. So here begin the reading of God's holy word. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite of the son of Asa came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of this, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Je Je ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. So far, the scriptures. The text is taken from verse 14. 
Then offered Jeziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah. A Levite, the son of Asa, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you praise and glory for your power, for your might, and for your word. Above all, Lord God, we give you, power, we give you praise and we thank you that you are with us that you are our God, that you know and you're concerned, you, you know all of our concerns and our worries, our fears, the things that have us so tripped up at times and cause us to be afraid. You're not void or you're not lack of understanding in what we're experiencing. But oh God, we thank you that you know everything about us. You know our foes, you know our friends. You know the trouble that beset us. You're not unacquainted with our grief. Father, we thank you that you know everything about us. Because of that, Lord, we come to you this morning and I ask of you, God, for the grace, the power, and the might, and the tenacity to preach your word. Lord, grant unto thy servant clarity of thoughts precision of expression. Lord, grant unto this thy servant the ears to hear, the tongue of the learned, a mind sharp to grasp your word, what you're saying to your people, Lord God, this day. Lord, I ask for the anointing that makes preaching easy. I ask for the anointing that will stir your people, Lord God, to trust you, to believe in you, to rest your hope in you. I ask for the anointing, Lord God, that will destroy yoke and shackle fetters. Move to this place, Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, come. Have your way. Have your way in this congregation, in this life, in our lives. Take full control, Lord God. Let this tongue speak only what the Lord, what thus said the Lord. Father, I look to you as my guide. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We, last week we began our journey by looking at Jehoshaphat. We begin to look at the situation. Jehoshaphat had just came back from a war. And he had sided with a, a king that God despised and God purposely set him aside to kill him. That particular king was Ahab. When he came back from the battle, the Bible said there was a young prophet by the name of Jehu. He rebuked Jehoshaphat to tell him, you know, you're going to side with the wicked. You can't side with the wicked. Then the Bible said that Jehoshaphat almost got killed in that battle. So he returned at home, and it seemed as if returning home, he had a different perspective. He, he began to put his house in order, or begin to put the kingdom in order, as the Bible said. The Bible said he began to appoint judges. The Bible said he began to tell the judges that be careful how you judge. Make sure that when you judge, you judge righteous judgment. Not only that, the Bible said he told him, he says, When you judge, let the fear of God be your judge. You found that in 2 Chronicles 19, look at verse, verse, verse 7. He said, Wherefore now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. And he says, Take heed and do, do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord or God, nor respect of person, nor for taking of gifts. God don't take gifts. He begins to tell them that you can't bribe God. There is no iniquity in God. So he's saying that when you judge, judge righteous judgment, because when you judge, you're not judging for yourself, you're judging for God. Amen. The Bible said he began to warn these judges and set them in places. And you feel more or less that if he's putting judges in place and setting his kingdom in order because he wants righteous things to happen, they want to see equity and justice, you feel more or less he would have no problem. But the Bible said that as he did that, someone 
came and reported to him that, yo, hey, there's an army that's coming against you. And they're coming up. Someone from Syria says, there's a great army that's coming against you. And they begin to describe how great this army is. If you look at 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1. The Bible said in verse 2, it says, And there came some and told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, this side of Syria. And behold, they are there be, there be in Hazard of Timor in Egypt. Sometimes you can hear news and you rejoice when you hear good news. But when you're a king and you're doing the right thing and you're a ruler of a country and you're doing the right thing and someone bring you bad news that you're about to be invaded. You're about to be attacked. And not only are you about to be attacked, but your enemy is over there. You can see where your enemy is and they're telling you. And then you begin to size up Look at the size of your enemies and look at the size of your army and you realize that the size of your enemies, your, your, the armies of your enemies is almost ten times the size of your army. The Bible said in verse 3 that Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim and fast toward all Judah. I want you to take a notice of what this leader did. When you are fearful, when you're fearful, you don't run and tell everyone and say, I'm afraid, or run and hide under the bed. You don't run and broadcast, yeah, you're fearful. The Bible said he set himself, set his face to seek the Lord. And he began to proclaim a fast. A fast, he says, I'm not going to eat until I hear from God. I have a situation on my hand. And I'm not going to eat until God tell me what he's going to do. The Bible said that after he proclaimed the fast, the Bible said he stood in the congregation, in the midst of the congregation of Judah. He said, Jehoshaphat, look at verse 5, he said, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new courts. In other words, when he appointed judges, he made, made a new court and he stood in the congregation of the, the people. And this is what this leader began to do. He began to question God. Have you ever questioned God? Come on. Have you ever find yourself in a situation and you question God? Why is this happening to me? And look at what I'm going to. Don't you see? His questions to God was a little bit different. As he began to question God, he began to make reference. He began by making reference to the God of his father, his forefathers. Look at verse 6. He says, And said, O Lord God of our Father, art not thou God in heaven? First he's asking, Are you not the God? He says, O God of our Father. Notice what he referenced to. His father's God, not my God, not aren't you my God? He refers to as the God of our Father. It simply means that this young king or this king is making reference to some stories that his father told him. And I keep telling my children over and over at times, and uh, no, no, I tell them, know the God of your father. Get to know the God of your father. Get to experience the God of your father. And I have all the reasons to say that because I've been in some tight places that has got me out. So Jehoshaphat began to tell him, aren't you the God of our father? You say, oh God of our father, aren't you, aren't you not the God of heaven? When you look up, he says, you're the God of heaven. Look at every one of those questions, a series of questions that he began to ask. And then he began to ask, he says, And rulest thou, thou over all the kingdom of the heathen? Don't you, are you the God of rule over the kingdom of the heathen? And then he asked another question, he says, And in thy hand, is there not power and might 
so that none is able to withstand thee. He said, don't you have power in your hand? Don't you have power on my that no one can withstand you? I mean, he's questioning God about certain things. That he, you want to know that you rule over the kingdom of the heathen. I want you to look at the series of questions. If you're the God of heaven and you rule in heaven, you mean you are high and you can look down and see what, what's happening. Amen. Not only that, but this nation that come against me, they are heathen nation. He said, are you not the ruler of this heathen nation? They don't know you. They don't have a relationship with you. They don't have a contract with you. They don't have a, 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 a what you call it, a, a, a pledge or, 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 or what do you mean? a covenant with you. Aren't you the God who rule over them? And then he said, don't you have power? Isn't your power so big and so great that none can hold you or stop you up? and uh, stop you from doing anything. I mean, you, your power is so supreme. He didn't stop there. He said, none can withstand thee. He went on in verse 7 and he says, Are not thou our God? He said, Are you not? You're the God of our Father, but no. Are you not our God? And then he says, Who did us drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, Thy friend forever, and then they requested Mark right there again. What this king is doing is rehearsing to God past victory. He's rehearsing to God who he is, where he sits. You sit up in the heavens, you rule the heavens. How you rule, what power belongs to you. The things that you did before. He's rehearsing to God what he did. And he's actually referencing Abraham, thy friend. Then he went on and he says, And they dwell therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein forever. For he says, For he says, therein for thy name's sake. He said, Not only did you give us the land, but you drive all the enemies that you gave. I'm going to find you drive all the enemies that give us the land. And we build your temple, a house for you, and we put your name to let them know that you are our God. So he's rehearsing to God. I want you to look at going somewhere with this because the Lord wants to open our eyes and show us a series of things. And it would behoove us to pay close attention. Look at verse 9. He says, If where evil come upon us as the sword, judgment, and our pestilence and famine, we stand before this house. And in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in affliction, then thou wilt hear us. That's not a question. He said, We build your house, and your name is in there. When pestilence and plague and trouble come upon us, we stand in this house and in front of this house because your name is here. And we call upon you, and you hear us. Right after that in verse 10, he begins to point out his dilemma. He begins to tell God what he's experienced. Look at verse 10, he says, And now, behold, he's actually saying, Now look, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou didst, thou wouldest not let Israel in vain when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them to destroy them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou gave us for an inheritance. He's saying that this army that come up against us, when we were coming out of Egypt, we had an opportunity to destroy them. We were just a bunch of slaves. But you have beaten us and you fix us in such a way that we were strong enough and we could have destroyed them. But you didn't permit us. You said we should go around. And if you were, if you, if you, if you knew with this congregation for a while, you'd hear me preach about a sermon that's called that my, I heard from my bishop many years ago, said, let me pass. So when Israel was coming out of Egypt, this same congregation, this same set of people, they wouldn't let them pass to go to their inheritance. 
and they could not wipe them out. In other words, they were trumping at the big and said, let us take them, let, let us fight them out just take their land also. And the Lord said, no, go around them. Don't fight against them. And Jehoshaphat had to say, Lord, these are the same people that you told us not to fight against. Now, I will leave them alone. We listened to you, we didn't beat them up, we didn't fight them. But look what they're doing us now. Instead of showing us kindness for them, wiping them out, now they're coming to drive us out of the inheritance that you gave us. Sir. It's very mercy to God a series of problems, a series of issues. Ah. In, in, in beginning of verse 11, they said, Behold, look, I say, how they reward us and come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. In other words, Lord, you gave us some things to inherit. We are living it, we are having fun. We are living in there. And these people come to drive us out of it. They don't belong to them, Lord. Look what he asked God. Look at verse 12. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? This is the question he's asking. You didn't permit us to clean your clock. Won't you judge them? He went on. And he says, For we have no might against this great company that cometh, cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. I think we rested here for a little while last week when we begin to talk about when he says, Our arm is not as big as them. We don't have the power and the might to go against them. If we decide to go fight against them, obviously they will annihilate us. We don't have the power, we don't have the might. And oftentimes, we need to take a stock and look at, look at we need to take a, a, an inventory of the army that come against us. We don't have the power, we don't have the might. And if obviously you don't have the power or the might or the resources to go against them, it, it tells me one thing. That this battle is not yours. When things come against you, when forces come against you and you don't have the resources, you don't have the money to pay off the bills, you don't have the wherewithal to hire the best of attorneys, you don't have the resource to go against the army that come against you. The bill collectors are I'm just making a reference to certain things that come against us on a daily basis. I'm taking, I'm taking biblical principles from there and I'm applying it to practical issues that we're facing with in present day time. When you try to need a scholarship and need to get into a good school and you don't have the money to pay it to, and you know that if you get in there, you or she get in there, they will do well. When you have bills piling up and you're working week after week with Robbie Peter to pay Paul and you're giving your title offering and things that are happening, you really know that this battle is not yours. Something is wrong. It couldn't be that God is letting you know, back up and let me handle this for you. Yeah. Oh, you, you look at it for a minute here. I want you to bring your, 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 your mind to just look at verse 12. He says, will you not judge them? And then he says, he talks about not having mind. Then he goes on to verse 13 and he says, And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. When you look around and you see your children and the things that you want to do for your wife and your children, you don't have the ability to do it. One of the things that you do, you bring them to the house of God. When you're going through problems, when you're going through issues, when you have things that pile up on you, you can't seem to get all of it and you can't seem to get away from it. And everywhere you turn, there's a problem. You turn to the right and there's a problem. You turn to the left and there's a problem. You look behind and there's a problem. Before you, there's a problem. And when you look at your children and your husband and your husband looks at the wife, all they can see is trouble. The best thing you can do is bring them to the house of God and present them to God. The Bible said he brought the children and the wife. Look at it in verse 13. He said, the Lord Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. It's a fantastic thing when you stand before God with your families. This is why God is for families. 
And the enemy will seek to destroy your family because when you destroy your family, it's like God and they're scattered and there's no unity and there's no strength in family when they're scattered all over the place and the enemy will seek to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when you have your families and you bring your families to the house of God, you can lift your hands and tell your church your voice and lift your hands and let God say, I don't have the food to put on the table, but this is what we're experiencing. <laughs> you tell them, lift your hands and let, let, let's tell God what we're experiencing. Let God see what we're going through. And the Bible said, your husband begin to rehearse what they're experiencing. I want you to notice what he's doing. All this time he's fasting. Not only is he fasting, but the entire nation is fasting before the Lord. And then he begin to rehearse to God what they're experiencing. And then we begin to read verse 14. The Bible said upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jehiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the son of Asa, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. I want you to know that when God, when you, when, when you, when you begin to fast and to pray and to petition God and to bring your problems to him, many of us don't like to fast. It's a difficult task. And not because you see pastor fast this day and fast that day. I'm not going to tell you when I'm fasting anymore. Because there's some things, there's some weapons of war that needs to be secret. And one of the things that you do, the Bible said, when he sees you in secret, you reward your opening. But many of us don't like to fast. We like to eat. I like to eat also. But there's, when some problem comes upon you, it takes your appetite from you. You see the food and you want to eat it. And you want to have fun and digest and you see, and somehow it looks good. But when you think about the food and the problem, it's an anger. Even if you have the appetite and you eat it, you realize, I eat it today, but the problem is still there. And there's some problems that I need to turn my plate down on and let God turn up the heat underneath my enemies. And the only way that I can get that is to let God know, listen, I'm sulking today. You provide food for me. Food is not my problem. I have no food. I got a roof over my head. Yes, it's satisfied by now. But there's some other things that I'm experiencing that you need to act upon. And I am not, although you provide the food for me and it's good, I don't want it. I'm not going to eat it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. And let me talk about it. Some people eat it. They're satisfied with it. But there's something inside of me that desires something else. There's a yearning inside of me that desires something more. My problems is so great that I can't get over it. It's bothering me and this thing keeps gnawing on me. There's an army perch on my doorstep. There's an army perch on my kingdom and you're about to annihilate me. I don't have the power. I don't have the might. And all I can do is turn my plate on and say, Lord, if you will go die anyway, so if I don't eat and I die from starvation, it's your fault. You are God. You are all God. You brought us out of Egypt. You look after us. You keep them out of the land. You brought us here. And now this army is about to attack. I don't want any food to eat. So the Bible said, why he's doing this? The Bible said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon this young man. And when you begin to fast, somehow you seem to get more sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. So you know that this young man was also fasting because the entire country is fasting. It's obvious that this young man is fasting. And not only that, this young man was of a priestly caste. He's from, he's a, he's from a descendant of priests. And the Bible said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Oh, you, when you talk about the Spirit of the Lord, talk about, let me just rest you for the one I talk about the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible said, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon this young man, he begin to prophesy and tell him something. When you get, when if you have a problem, baby, I can tell you, get in the spirit, get in the spirit, get in the spirit. The Bible says, they are not led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Oh, when you get in the spirit, when you have a problem, baby, get in the spirit. Let the spirit of the Lord lead you. Let the spirit of the Lord guide you. Let the spirit of the Lord instruct you. Don't do it in flesh. But all the weapons of a warfare are not carnal. They are mighty to God to the pulling on a stronghold. You can't fight carnal, fight your, your war with carnal weapons. You got to do spiritual warfare. Amen. So the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came upon this young man. I want you to notice something before the Bible tell you that the Bible begins to read off his, his, his genealogy. 
They tell you where he's coming from, who his, his, his daddy was. They, they tell you who his daddy's daddy's daddy was, who his great grandfather was. So you know and the Bible says, I'm the priesthood. So you know that this, ex, this young man had experience. He knew the spirit of the Lord. So this wasn't a young man that was, was unacquainted with the spirit of God. This young man knew the spirit of God and they recognized the spirit of the Lord. Not only that, they also recognized that this young man was a young prophet. They know it. I want you to look at it. The Bible said in verse 15, he said to them, this is what he said. And he said, Hearken you all, hearken you all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, God said the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. I begin last week, my tell, I, I, after I climax last week in the city and get to one point, I begin to tell you that put your hand behind you and say, I ain't fighting no more. When the battle don't belong to you, don't put up the dukes and begin to fight. If this battle is yours, then you can fight. But if the battle is not yours, put your hand behind you and look up and say, I ain't fighting no more. It belongs to God. This battle is not mine. When I look at the army and say, oh, big they are, oh, bad they are, oh, large they are, and come in, compare it in comparison to my army, it means that I have no might, I have no power, I can't go against them. And the Bible said, Jehoshaphat said, we don't have the might, we don't have the power. Oh, but our eyes are on you. Oh, I remember when David said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. In other words, Jehoshaphat said, I don't got the power, I don't got the might, but I'm looking at you, Lord, you got the power, you got the might. It would be you to know that when your God got the power and your God got the might, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. The Bible said that this young man said, this is what you must do, looking to Jesus, looking to God. You don't got the power. You don't got the might. The army that's coming against you, they're bigger than you, they're better than you, they have the weapons of war, all kind of things. Oh, you, 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 you're purely compared to them. It means that when you see things like that, it means that God got you and get you in a bind to let you know that you don't have the power to fight this army. You don't have the wherewithal to fight this army. You can't fight this army. God got you in a bind to get your attention. Oh, oftentimes, isn't that the way it gets our attention? You're going on every day with your everyday life. You go to work, you come home, you eat, you sleep, and you go and God says, I want to do something more for you. I want you to get to know me. I want you to get to know who I am. And all of a sudden, you see trouble from that way, trouble this way, trouble that way. And but what's the first thing you do? Lord, help me! You need to turn to the Lord. He says, I got your attention now. Oh, yes, I got your attention now. And when you turn to the problem a little bit more, you drop it. Sometimes the problem comes in such a way that you might stand and say, Oh, Lord, help me! And instead of standing, you drop to your knees. And when you drop to your knees, you turn a little more. You say, I ain't eat no more. I go faster. This is too bad. This is too big. I can't handle it. I got to get to the next level. So you begin to fast. <laughs> ah, the search in say, God wants to get your attention, don't he? <laughs> Ask the name. Don't you know God wants to get your attention? He knows what to do. Ah, oh, God has a way. I mean, he, he, he can't get you when you're sweating, when you're awake, he gets you when you're asleep. Some of those schemes. Ask Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar. If he can't get you when you're awake, he gets you when you're asleep. And if, he, if, if you're awake and you keep ignoring, he gets you with other things. You look around you and then you see a bush burning. And you, you're curious enough to see uh, the fire of the bush not burning. You, he gets your attention. You're curious enough to walk over there and look at it. Then he says, got you. I'm calling you. There's some unusual, there are some unusual circumstances that are taking place in your life. And God is saying, I want your attention. I need for you to look at me. I need your undivided attention. And if it takes trouble for me to get your attention, I will put trouble here. Because I'm big enough and I'm bad enough to get you out of the trouble that I cause. I cause your enemies to come up against you. Because I want you to know my might and I want you to know my power. But in order for me to do that, I've got to get your attention. 
And God has a way of getting your attention. Oh, I've been there, I've done that. Hello, my friend, how you doing? God got your attention, isn't he? Ha <laughs> ha! He knows how to get your attention, baby. When you ignore for a long time, he says, okay, I would like to be ignored. I am God. I wake up in the morning. I give you food to eat. I give you clothes to wear. I give you fine chariots to ride in. I put clothes on your back. And you keep ignoring me. Oh, I got something to remind you. Let me let you know who caused the shot. Oh, I was listening to a song this morning. Says, I'm learning. Oh, it's a drag out, beat down battle. My arms are too short and bitter. It's an empty So he said, the song was singing this week. He said, I'm learning who is in charge. It's, it's, I'm not the one who is in charge, but it's a drive down, it's a big old battle. It says, I, it, it, it says I, I need to learn to go where you go. I need to follow where you say follow. But now I can't fight no more. All I got to do is look at you and say, Lord, you take the lead. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. One songwriter said, you take the lead and let me play the background. <laughs> oh, because every time I, I try to take the lead, I realize I'm just a speaking song in process. But Lord, let me play the background. You take the lead and I will follow you. And oftentimes you got to back down and let you know I'm in charge, it's not you. I want you to look at what this young prophet did. The Bible said he began to encourage them. He said to them, You don't have the might. The Bible said in verse 15, he says, For the battle is not yours, but God. And then he went on in verse 16, he said, Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of this, and ye shall find them at the end of the road, before the wilderness of Joel. He's telling them, it's, 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 I find it a little funny here. He's telling them, you don't have to fight with them. The battle is not yours. You won't have to fight in this battle. But yet he said, go up against them. It seems hard. It seems somewhat stilted. In other words, he said, you don't have to fight against them. But go out and show yourself anyway. Make yourself vulnerable. Jesus. Let them see you. When I look at this, I begin to look and say, Lord, I'm already vulnerable. What, what, why? Let them see you. And, I, and the enemy has a way of looking at you. When, when you. Can you imagine? You look at a massive army and pants and all the weapons of war. And you're not going out there to say, with a peace flag and waving it. You're going out there standing by and saying, Bring it. And they're looking at you and saying, Is he this right man? God said, Show yourself. Go all along. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, this is, this is. Easy. You see, your ways are not God's ways. And his ways are not your ways. He got weapons to fight that you don't know of. He got things that he can make some wasp or some beast. He has weapons. The Bible says he's the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies. When you want to use a slingshot, he's the one who, like, like David, David take up a slingshot. And you think David said, he took up a slingshot to go after Goliath. I want you to know, he might have taken up the slingshot and the stone, but God guided the stone. You pick up a spear and God guided the spear. Oh, oh, what do you know about this town? Yeah, there was a man by the name of Ahab. The Bible said, preventure, a man just put a bow and just fire randomly, and it hit the man that God is saying, he's going to die. Not only that, but he was in disguise. And the Bible says, for adventure, a young man just pull a hole with a fire. And all of a sudden, the fire started. Never end that it, but it's fire. God knows how to fight your enemies, baby. He got weapons that you don't know of. Whatever weapons come against you, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to put it away. He knows how to shield you. He knows how to make yeah. your enemies. I, I mean, God, God got weapons. I mean, the Bible says, he's, he's, he's a Lord of hosts. So why don't you notice what he did here? I said, look at this. And, and he gave them the time to. Tomorrow, go you down against them. In other words, when he says against them, he's actually saying, you tell me, you don't have to fight. Well, go down against them. You tell me, I'm not going to have to fight. But you're telling me, go down against them. It means, go down and oppose them. But you tell me not to fight. 
But God will tell him, you can't come in here. And they look at me, can you imagine me telling the mint of the United States? Or telling them, bill collectors who are owe billions of dollars when I have a few twenty dollars, just a couple of twenty dollars in my wallet and they look at me and they say, we're going to take your bill and they take it. I said, and I'm going to they say, you can't take it. They will look at you. Who do you think you are? Who do you, do you know we own the bag? Who do you think you are to tell us we can't take it? And, and some of them say, watch me. Yeah, that's the difference. They're looking at me. But I'm not looking at me. I'm looking at the God who told me to tell them, you can't come in here. The Bible said, they that are with us are more than with them. And they're looking at me. I can see them looking at Jehoshaphat's army when Jehoshaphat goes and said, You can't come in here. And they're looking at him and said, Is he crazy? Is he not? Don't, don't he see my army? I got all this behind me. And he said, We can't come in here. Do, do you understand? When you see things like that, know that God is on the march. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Elisha. The Bible said the armies of Syria came against him. Overnight, they swarm the city when they wake to the prophet. The prophet was in asleep, went to bed. And the Bible said that the armies came and surrounded the city. And when they got up in the morning, the servant of the prophet looked up and see the army and went back and said, My master, my master, the armies have surrounded us. And Elijah, I can imagine Elijah brushed his teeth. Don't worry about them. They're not with us and more than with them. Well, don't worry. And, and, and he said, don't worry about it. They that are with us is more than that with them. And the prophet said, I ain't see nobody. All I see are they surround us. But I don't see nobody. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, when you look, I mean, I mean, this, this is one of those kind of Michael. And because the prophet can see more and better and clearer than the servant can see, he says, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Some of us we can, should begin to ask God, open my eyes that I may see, Lord. And the Bible said, as the Lord opened his eyes, he began to see angels with drawn swords and chariots and fire. And realized the whole mountain covered it, covered with angels with drawn swords to fight against the enemy. Oh, I want to take you, want to tell you this morning, take heart. Whatever problem you're going through, you have more going for you than against you. All the little bit collectors are coming, and these little things that are coming up, and these little problems that are playing here, the sickness and these little things that are coming here, you have more going for you than is against you. Oh, take heed, take heed. I want you to look at verse 17. It says, The Lord told him where the enemy is coming from. One of the things that the Spirit did when it came upon Jehaziel. It gave them information, inside information, where the enemy is, where they're coming from, what the people of God should do. He said they're coming up by the cliff of this. You shall find them at the end of the brook. He said they're coming up over this cliff, and you'll find them over the brook. I mean, when you're in the spirit, God will give you information that no one, no one else has. He gives you direction, he gives you where they're coming from, where they're dwelling, or what their intentions are. Walk in the spirit, they let the spirit, but when you want to make a decision, son, as it relates to the business that you're about to transact in a couple of weeks from now, ask the Lord, Lord, how do you want me to handle this? Give pull the curtain back and give me information that no other people might, nobody has had. <laughs> Tell them, give me a 15% advance. Oh, hallelujah. Give me a 15% advance. 50% advance, no, 50% advance. Give me a five days, five days, give me a 15% advance, or five days worth of work. <laughs> Oh, well, why? You know, don't give me a 15% advance of five years and you won't get your work done. Just a contract, right? It was done. Just book it up. And you will find them by the brook before the wilderness of jail. And then in verse 17, he makes it known clear what they're going to do. He said, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. You're going up against them. And he's telling them, You can't come in here. He said, don't worry, you don't have to fight. Don't do what I tell you to do. You ain't got to do the fighting. So when you go in and tell them, you don't have to fight this battle. You stand up and look at this. You can't fight when your hands are behind you. There are two positions.
position behind, the three positions behind, our four positions behind can be in. You can be called and pray. No, it's not the time to pray. You fast and pray already. All you can do, you know, and put your hands to fight. That's not going to work because then you're going to take the battle out of God's hand. You can lift your hands to worship, and that's a good position to be in. Because when you live, the enemy might think you're surrendering, but what I'm actually doing is worshiping. Uh, all right, put my hand behind me, Mark Tyler said, I ain't fighting. I choose to take the one that I lift my hands and begin to praise God. All the weapons of God are different, baby. God don't fight with sword and spear. He tells people to fight a different way. But I mean, I mean, it's foolishness to your enemy when I look upon it. The Bible said, the foolishness of God, of, of God, man's wisdom, man, by the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. And the foolishness of God is confound the wise. I mean, they look at this, this is foolishness. Don't make no sense. How are you going to tell me, don't fight, don't, don't, don't fight. The battle is not yours. When I look at the army, I tell you, don't fight. Now, when you look at verse 7, listen, you shall not be to fight in this battle. Set yourself and stand still. They don't make no sense. Don't make no sense. Don't make a, that, 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 that the says, this don't make a little sense. It don't make a little sense here. He said, you don't have to fight. Just stand still. I'm supposed to go out against them. Look at them. Show myself. Make myself vulnerable. It's like, I can see it's like an egg. It's like having, it's like he want me to be like raw meat. Let them look at me as raw meat. It's like, it's like setting raw meat before a hungry dog or a hungry pack of wolves. I said, just hang out there and let them see us raw meat and think, yeah, I'm going to get them now. It's not me, I mean, but I mean, God, God, God is funny. I mean, if I look at this, I want to go hide. And God said, no, don't hide. Shh, let them see you. Hang out there, let them see you. Let them lick them and go, hmm, mm, this is roast beef, baby. This is raw meat. I got it now. I got to annihilate it. God said, let them think that way. Because you're going to fight this battle. And I don't know why you, but, but when you're doing it, talk them. Tell them you can't come in here. I look at this and say, oh, Lord, this, this will make a little sense. And then he tell me, stand still and see. In other words, I want you to be an observer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a movie before you. And I want you to be a spectator. God is saying, stand still and be a spectator of what I am going to do. You see, if you move too fast, you will miss it. He wants you to stand still and see the salvation. Salvation means see the saving that God is going to use to get you out of the problem. Don't panic. Don't cuss. Don't cut. Stand still. Let them see you and watch what God is going to do. I mean, I look at them and say, oh, this makes sense. The young prophets, the young prophet says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Meaning the one standing still and watching and not standing alone. Just turn to me and stop and say, I'm not alone. I got God with me. I'm not just to the top and look up in the face and say, I'm not alone. The enemy is coming up against me, but I'm not alone. I got the Lord with me. And he said, and then he, then he begins to say, look at verse 7, verse 7, he says, and the last one says, Oh Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go on against them, for the Lord will be with you. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, this young prophet is giving me, I mean, all you need, when you have problems coming up on you, all you need is a word from the Lord. All you need is just a positive word from the Lord. The Bible said when David, when when the when, when, when the Amalekite invaded Ziklag, and they took David's wives, more than one, and they, 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 they raided the camp and took their wives and the children and everybody. And David come back and the Bible said they were about to stone David. The Bible said David inquired of the Lord, shall I go after them? Shall I pursue? And if I pursue, will I recover? The Bible said the Lord said, pursue. Not only are you to pursue, but you shall recover all. All you need is a word from the Lord. When you get a word from the Lord, God is not a man that he should lie. When God tells you to pursue, pursue. When he tells you you're going to recover, you're going to recover. Not just recover, you're going to recover all. All pursue the Lord. says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Fear not. Be not this day. Tomorrow go on again. For the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. When the Lord is with you, baby, you've got to worry about a thing. You can walk into the enemy's camp, and for some reason, all of you, 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 you walk into the enemy's camp, Kevin, and the enemy 
you think you're walking alone. When you walk into the enemy's camp, for some reason, they look at you and they begin to run. And look, and they're pointing. They, they, they're not pointing. They look, 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 look. And you're looking at them. What are they pointing at? I'm only alone. No, baby, you're not alone. They, they see things that you're not seeing. They see angels. They see swords. They see flames of fire from swords of angels who are watching over you. Because the Bible said the angel of the Lord encamped around them the fear and delivered them. Angels are watching over me. It doesn't matter what kind of weapon you bring against me. My Bible tells me no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I have a right to condemn it. For there Fight that battle. 
You don't need to fight this one. God is saying, I got you. This battle is mine. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God is saying, this battle belongs to me. What are you way that I want you to do? While I, while I fight your battle, all I got you to do, need you to do, drop to your knees and worship. That's what he's saying. The Bible said he dropped his knees with his face down to the ground and make himself more vulnerable to the enemy. When you are on your knees and the enemy is coming up against you, you have no, you can't stand up, you're on your knees, you're, you're inferior to the enemy, he's looming over you. And there's nothing that you can do. But all you can do, you're fine, you're vulnerable. But in our actuality, you are not. The only thing that you might be surrendering by bowing and crouching on your knees. But what I'm actually doing is all my enemies. I'm bowing and worshiping the one who's looming over me, who's going to clean your clock. I'm bowing to the God of Israel. I'm bowing to the God of Judah. I'm bowing to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm bowing to the God that I just talked to. The one that I said, I'm to the God that made the heavens and the earth. I'm to the God who stretched out the heavens like a curtain. I'm Come this way, when the enemy comes this way, he meets up in a song. 
They said, I know my Redeemer lives. Oh, oh. And when he backs up and he goes the other way, he even weeps and I say, my Lord shall defend me. <laughs> And when he backs up and he comes the other way again, I hear him beat up in another sound and says, The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. <laughs> and every way he turns and tries to preach it, he meets up in a psalm. And God comes true and fulfills exactly what you're sitting and praising about. Begin to worship. Come on, give me a psalm. Oh, begin to worship. Begin to worship. I'm teaching you how to fight. I'm teaching you how to let God fight for you. Yeah. Now you don't have to fight. I'm teaching you how to let God fight your battles for you. Oh, give me a song. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.